Hello, I'm Brack of the Pirate, and welcome to my Let's Play of Exercise Me. This is made by Lemon Ace. This game exercise me, so... Yeah, I'm expecting good things, even though I wasn't that amazed by, like, the... Oh, what was it? The, the one with the siren, the mermaid song... game. But it's been good, but... yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of horror. I hope there's more horror in this game. I don't know. Sorry to live in lace. <laughs> Attractive men and women in a big church and begin a romance in the janitor's closet. This game on scenes, light body horror, terrible priest, terrible surgeons, and gaslighting. Do you have to spoil everything? Would you like to spew the spoiler content warnings? No. Reader discretion is advised. Now, dear leader, let us begin our descent. I ain't a bitch. I ain't a bitch, right? Who are you? No, really, who are we as people? I really do hate to get this philosophical, but it must be done. But without this knowledge, the story to come what we want it makes much sense. Are we the labels forced upon us, onto us from birth? Ah, oh, I can't read. Are we our beliefs, hopes, experiences? Really, it's impossible to condense our time being into one arbitrary idea. Hence, why the self is an amalgamation of all those things. It is a common belief that the self resides within a person's soul. That's quite the laughable belief. Oh, materialist. <laughs> or even would the soul be a heart's? No, the self resides on the soul heart, but rather than the pinkish gray wrinkly mesh tissue nodes of brain. Oh, <laughs> I'm euphoric. <laughs> I'm euphoric. <laughs> so I don't believe in religion. Uh, yes, yes, I know it's answer to don't fulfill the fantastical desires we hold. But it's true. Brain. When something is deemed wrong with yourself, it isn't the heart that's tampered with. Rather, brain falls victim to that tampering. Clarence, what's with that long face? You know why. I can it now. This really isn't the way I like to spend my Sunday morning. Oh, this isn't how I want to spend mine either. You sort of thought that before going off like you did. You bite your tongue. No man to complain will change your mind. Besides, it's not like you could just run out. It's not like you could just run out from that massive doorway you entered from. That wouldn't exactly remedy the problem if you have, if you even call it that. Look, Clarence, this isn't going to help you. It's going to help all of us. It would be quite selfish of you not to go through with it. Selfishness doesn't matter now, though. It'll be gone once this demon is ripped out of you. Guess I better get on with it. Wouldn't want to be selfish. Although maybe I wouldn't be so apprehensive about this if they just told me what the heck exercising a demon entails. And I've seen YouTube videos on this. They like... <laughs> they say... <laughs> be like in the... Exorcist... What is it there? I don't know. I don't remember what they say. <laughs> Get out. Get back, Satan. <laughs> Holy chat with some of you guests here. Perhaps they can tell you a bit about what's going to happen. They're acting an adult by now. There's no reason why they have to hide something so benevolent from you. Hmm, oh, so they're the same kind of sprites. Is like the yeah I don't remember Mermaid's Curse I don't remember the name of the game. It's the last game. No clue what this man is. Anyone's coming to mind with him describing a manly badass and a heroic. Pretty sure he isn't related to you. But this is the thing about churches. Any Roman person can come and go as they please. Useless. Oh. <laughs> Manly badass here. 
been watching these videos a long time, as one of your many uncles. He's the father of your little cousin Samuel. He's like most husbands in the British city. He beats his wife, gets so drunk that he forgets his own name, sleeps other people behind his wife's back. Try to get his son and wife lobotomized. On the top of life, he goes to church his Sunday without fail. No that dragging his bike than anything his son. Pretty happy that you're finally doing what's right for the family. Seems like one of your relatives brought a little cat with a dapper top. That was being like a pinch on the clock. Pretty sure that woman is an aunt. But it doesn't really narrow down the list of who this is. You're too many aunts to keep count. Oh, Clarence, look how you've grown. Hello, aunt. Memory of a name of A.T. She had the courtesy to remember your name, and you couldn't return the favour. Montia, you don't remember me? You were just a baby the last time I saw you. Now oh, you're right, they grown so much. Soon you're going to be snatched up all the women at college. I'll become an incel. <laughs> an incel in browse for Chan. <laughs> I say that, you ought to do something about that hair. It's not very fitting for a strapping lad now, is it? Guess it would come to two surprises that that's what she thinks. Never mind that though, it should be clear just from her coming just from her coming her coming here. I'm expecting this means here. Dante, are you looking forward to the grand event? You eternally cringe upon hearing yourself describe the event in such a manner. You already know that yes, she's indeed excited for this event. Maybe she heard from her mother about what's going to happen. But of course, I'm so excited for this, Sigarance. You haven't a clue how happy I am for you. The illness plaguing you will be gone, just like that. Beg your pardon? I'm suffering from illness I don't know of. Hope to the minute you say something along the lines of. Well, you actually have this rare, rare illness, so I'm not actually here to do what you think. The virus is going to kill you. Don't worry, but the power of medicine will help you. Then this will be like none of this ever happened. Hey, <laughs> faith healing does work sometimes. <laughs> Miracles do happen. This is probably my most contradict this fantasy. Clarence, don't act like you don't know. There is already enough Clarence and I'm a scary one. Well, your mommy told me it was icing on the cake. You'd like you should have been to get on with this. Exorcisms. Okay, fine. Become an alcoholic. See how you... <laughs> Relatives and Mac will bring their pets everywhere they go. Please walk us on the pegs. I'm a pork. Strangely enough though, this hawk is green. Never seen a green hawk before. It opens his beak to speaking calls and screeches. Loving something and just like gold. Said that. Oh damn it, who trained this walk to talk? This is very jerky. Something about this person is so familiar. Wait, could that be him? Hey Ash, who? Is it him? Clarence, what did you say? Oh, it was nothing. Cousin rolls his eyes and get back to standing. Saying that Patty placed it on his face, a slight tinge of annoyance to fill. Visible. Glad to leave him alone. I'll make things all good if you stay too long. That's your little cousin Samuel. You haven't seen him in quite some time, even though the two of you glued to the hip a few years ago. I wonder what he's going to think about you needing this exorcism. Brace is out for the disappointment. How can my oldest cousin who I looked up to do something so scandalous? Ugh. Then you pretty surely you fell back, but he's doing the right thing with that demon exercised. My clients, don't time to see you. How have you been? I've certainly seen better days, sir. What about you? You're in high school now, right? High school's okay. I guess you can say that I've also seen better days. Science hangs in the air for a good while. It's a two weeks to in misery. Guess it isn't going so well for either us, huh? Oh, Clarence, I know this type of family room thing is you out you or something, so I'm sorry if it sounds selfish for me to ask you something. Samuel, don't be sorry. It isn't your fault that Mother dragged us all here to get a demon out of me. 
I really don't want to be here for whatever they do to you. Don't want to be here for whatever they do to me. I'd rather help you if I'm being honest. I'm soon you won't tell my mom. You only had an affirmation. This is a classmate, a friend actually. Because how many classes do you have in common? We end to speak to each other. We've been speaking more now. At first, I felt it was all normal. You know, just two people hanging out with each other, nothing more. There's a butt to the story, isn't there? Do you know what it's like to look at someone and feel this pounding in your chest? Like your heart's gonna run into arms if you don't stop looking at them. And then you can't stop, because that person is your future. They're who you see spending a good chunk of your life with these. With. You just want to know them something so, so much more than a friend. For some of these jobs are up. You're gonna regret it if you don't take the chance of them now. Parents, I, they're not. Soon he lives close to you and begins to whisper. Alright, he's a boy. Ow. You're gay. <laughs> Those are boys either, it's his feelings. Should I be having them for a girl? Wait, but. Oh, that wouldn't be a good idea, I mean. I mean, you're only 2% of the population. Only 2. You have to. You have to delicately. Put it like, hey, hey bro, you gay. <laughs> bro, bro, you gay. We do gay tests. I don't know anyone to eavesdrop on this. Let's say me in the same position as you. So I means lover in a blowing tone. Alright, so what's wrong with me? I'm not supposed to feel this way towards my best mate. I can be wearing a dress, Clarence. I'm Samuel. Tell me, there's nothing wrong with everything wrong with it. What's my mother gonna say? What's my mate gonna say if he finds out? Yeah, I mean, it's a very tiny chance he's gay. I mean, I don't know. I know, I know. Today's, you know, the truth of what happened. You said the covering wouldn't be the most comforting. You're gonna have to go on Tinder to find the the dude, dude friend. <laughs> That's you, Nosh, your best mate, right? You need to tell me how you'd be feeling towards my mate. You can't exactly do that. I can't change the way you view your friend by telling me how you view Ash. Uh, Why, mate? You can tell me. I can sort of force my mind back to normal. I don't know, but I'm desperate for any solution. Can't tell you about that, because Asher and I, we. Can't bring myself to say it, even though know, there could be comfort Samuel. Asher and I are best mates. Oh, there's no one held who said that. That's exactly what she said. You could go with that lad one more time, you never see the lad a day again. Yet here you are. That lad she speaks of. Other umbrellas tree, you're gone, Clarence. Actually, you got quite the bad influence on me. Ah, uh, my sir, bad. You know, all I did was say go out my parents said all you. Let's not even talk about how you got you to kiss me. No, oh, everybody's gay in this story. <laughs> but this is this is a modern story. <laughs> Not anything scandalous yet. I think you annoyed me the fact that you don't so much say uh, this they resolved the next big controversy in the paper. Okay, you got me. I didn't quite think that through. Generally speaking, I shouldn't be having this song in an immature manner. Always on a calm, composed my demeanor, fitting for a future detective. Here there is there's this place of persona just for you. The energy is contagious, even the stuff is some laughter move closer to him. Look at him, he's like staring at a vignette, frozen time and nothing in focus except for him. So this is every single pesky problem yours melted away in this very moment. I really, really want to kiss you now. Why don't you? It's not like you'd get as hectic as the last time. Of the last time. Uh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> last time the two of you got this close with the Janice closet of the school. A romantic. Where I see for the two of you is altered luxury. You're healing away from the critical eyes and the masses. Else it was just a luck that Janet needed to retrieve him off from the closet. You're very pleasant time explaining to Jana you no clue how you end up closet with your best mate. Clarence. 
Clarence, what is it? You know why we can't do that here. I can't do it. I should try to lighten the mood a bit. Really broken off the... Now this is like... Going off on a tangent. I thought it was just another... I thought the main beat of the game would be in the exorcism, but no, it's in the gay bros. <laughs> it's the gay bro. The gay bro game. The other game was lesbian bros, this is gay bros. Who bringing off your mom's rules just by being with me? Why don't go the extra mile? You know me, I know when you... You know me, I know when you're as brave as you. Why don't I call myself brave? Don't blame me, Clarence. I want you to know you I get it. You know, my old man's all gun call about masculinity and all that. I think mom would even be worse than my father about this kind of thing. It's like keeping us a secret, even if Emma's not around, it's so exhausting. You're struggling too, aren't you? What makes you say that? You're struggling to not kiss me. Alright, you got me here. I heard this, we find somewhere we can be asked without having to worry about our families. Oh, you're telling me the inside of the German's closet doesn't count. So, the only place for hopeless romantics like us. And probably how quickly the janitor found us. Just be glad the Jenna didn't tell anybody. Of course I am. I wouldn't want to be married off because someone tattled on us. Wouldn't that be a terrible way for this to end? Oh. Let's think about us. So you need to realize that you never got the chance to tell me the real deal you're in. When are you going to get to the exorcism? <laughs> It's bad that he doesn't know. He probably blamed himself for this. Some sort of the two of us together and clearly saw all through a platonic act. How come he has a dress? Unless Samuel's a girl. Plus, being physically close to someone isn't the best way to act platonic. He was a little hard to understand why holding hands is always viewed as romantic. Can you ruminate in your thoughts? We're giving Samuel's there. Uh... Clarence, is everything alright with you? Oh, yes. So, about your feelings and all, I think. Was interrupted by someone's revival. I saw the little fungus piss you the hell off. Well, Clarence, I think I'm just going to go now. That something disappears through the massive church doors. Poor thing really has to do with his mother fighting against his drunk father. No one to listen to interactions with this bitch. Well, what are you doing here? Wet slide rather than tongue. Obviously, you generally have enough anus clues of why you're here. Hello, Adalia. You don't have anything else to say to me? You spoke so much with that cousin. What, you have more in common with him than with me? It is of no concern to you. And the feeds clues so of why the hell Adalia Hallows is here. To your knowledge, you're unrelated to her in any way. Is it like that matters, though? Tell me or not, she's always been rather insufferable. At least you seem to throw salt in your wounds. What's Asha doing? Like you actually care. So you're interested in Asha, why are you asking me? Two years so damn close. I figure that you know every little thing about him. Some so he had over heels for him, you don't seem to want to speak to him. Do you have a choice? You'd practically hoard whatever time he isn't spending on work. It's like I want to be a nuisance on a blog. That would make for a terrible impression. Feel the wild clawing fly up the back of your throat. And dear Hollis wishes for all them learn today she'd be told to Ash of Cyprus. Dear makes you cringe, she began Adela Cyprus. No. <laughs> Didn't speak to her, she probably says you got Miss Cyprus. Miss Cyprus is Miss Cyprus that goddamn Miss Cyprus. At this point it's like she's getting Ash's love over you. I didn't say something about it, isn't it? Until the words, I would certainly humiliate you if you did. What are you meant to do? Grin and bear it? Are you going this your whole life? Certainly you'll be able to do this one time. It's better, Clarence. Can't go your tongue. How could it be? Daily for once in a couple seven lights, hush your gem voice. Maybe just maybe she doesn't want to humiliate you. I feel it's a habit of it's a broadcaster words of all those in the vicinity. 
Now would be the perfect time to do that. The space has chosen to disperse a message all in the building. Flynn's in closely. Gonna be you're just jealous. Jealous? What do you mean? Jealous? No, I'm not gay! No! <laughs> Dread creeps like your spine. Does she know? Hope to divinity that she doesn't. Not that divinity will listen to you anyways. Do you hate people you so much? Isn't there a reason why they hate you, please? Oh, God doesn't hate you. I don't know why gay people think that God hates them. I mean, it's kind of dumb. I mean, there's lots of stuff in the Bible which Christians don't abide with. I mean, take with like, like turn the other cheek when someone strikes you. I mean, why do we have standing armies if we believe that? If it, yeah. It would be the same with homosexuality. There's plenty of people, there's plenty of people who are religious, like me, I'm religious, I don't think that gay people will go to hell or shouldn't be gay or have butt sex, whatever, you should, you should do what you want. I don't know, it's a stereotype. Don't look into that, you know this is your undoing. The early months something her breath. She's trying to find a glare with you. Something tells you they don't want to know what she said. You mind you quickly piece together what she's much smugger than usual. What the hell is the deal? You be off the ash rails. She already has him all to herself. It's like One thing which is like strange about this game is like there's two gay couples. Two natural gay couples which don't like. I don't know, I'll explain. I'll explain later on. But. Yeah, it's like a coincidence. It's a big coincidence. Like. <laughs> Fair enough, there being one gay couple, but. Really, two. Two gay couples. Two of them said the word and they'd be married. So much you don't understand the ways in which people you love. You like to believe you're not like an elder, you're clearly obsessed with Asha. Now you think about it, perhaps it seems that way to elders. The Vinny visits two male men's old hands and tease each other. Unless you probably need to always want to see my other charity. Divinity. What's this? This is like. This is actually a. This is like a different world, I think. Divinity. He doesn't specifically say God. So it must be like a different... Must be like a different world. Because he did say it was the same world as the other, his other games, so I'm guessing there, there'd be sirens as well. Real monsters and weird stuff like that. Glued among the faces of round. If you don't think I'm too convinced it is that you're even here. Go on, Clarence, go on your days to get this over with. When the charity begins to speak to you, an only one, Ch Divinity rides to rise a task from you. Ritual commands you aside all the candles. No charity bestows upon your holy lighter. Hold your movement for a minute. Divinity's love is inevitable. You think you can escape it. You're sorely mistaken. Can't help but wonder what Belemon had died, his love would be inevitable. Something of the love cleansing grounds you desire rubs you the wrong way. No, I'm an atheist! <laughs> no. <laughs> Even Richard Dawkins. What do I you all peach of us light the candles? Oh, you're so much easier, the candles are already lit. Someone took the time to arrange your candles, can we also lit them? Then we have to do a quick time event. I wonder what happens if it failed the quick time event. I'm scared. Will I burn down the church? Is this like a D and D thing? Is there a critical miss? And I like suddenly my hand explodes. 
Abdul's petition so to lie the council by his submission to divinity. After a now mother charity can say you comply with the ritual, seeing how he helped it set up. It's just like a different world, like, where gay people are, like, more plentiful. <laughs> They're probably like 20% of the population. I don't know. Yeah, all these... Didn't I? The candles? I lit the candles. I was a good boy. these candles. What about our mother Charity said to bring some unconditional love for your humans. Of course the unconditional love always up for debate. Oh. No. <laughs> Carl Sagan. <laughs> God delusion, when you all do where the divinity's love, you must follow the world side out in the little book. So much your unconditional love. This is kind of silly. So we will send a little book out here out of love and here you want. Use that book to help find the love, but almost impossible to do so. The more you think about it, the more you think about it, the little book just wants to make your love divinity romantically. Mother Charity is never out of love. She always finds something in people that's not up to code of what the book says. She also loves the divinity. Everything is divinity's will, she'd always say. She had the odd behavior lines perfectly what the book says with the ideal human. You spend yourself and other people do backwards a deity you can't prove the existence of. Well, there's plenty of, plenty of ways to prove God. <laughs> How about the fine-tuning argument? <laughs> How about that, huh? <laughs> uh, fine-tuning. No. How about morality? How about objective morality? There should be all the chat candles. So, this should be seek to Mother Charity again to start the ritual. Oh. Look at the mother's face as a frown. I'm sorry, but I completed the task. Yes, all the candles have been lit. Candles have been lit. Come now, let's commence the ritual. Are you ready to start the ritual? You ready to go back once you started? I need to do something first. I need to save. Oops, I didn't read it. I'm sorry, alright. I'm, I'm crappy, let's... Huh? Isn't that like you have much to say in the matter? You hold the ritual, drink this. Of the charity hand you a vial of clear liquid. For some reason, the appearance reminds you of a disgustingly bit of medicine. What is this? I shouldn't have known that you would resist. Just wish to know what this liquid is. It's not going to conjure up the words to both appease her and obtain an answer. Divinity's will for you to drink that. They told me so. In order for a ritual to work, this vial must be consumed by you. But it's the Mother Charity's will for you to shut the fuck up and drink. What a nice see drink chase like teenagers' horrible attempt at training lean. Chemicals burn your taste buds. What is lean? It was in Divinity's will to shove the questionable chemicals into your system. Body revulsion, Mother Charity seems quite pleased. Come now, clan spirit awaits you. You stand in the center of the six candles. After everything's seven to clear to what Mother Charity is going to do to you, hope that she simply chants a few prayers and calls it a day. Now they're gonna slap you. <laughs> I've seen YouTube videos. <laughs> they slap the demons out of you. 
Down these solves every other problem that bounce of equal after all. Children of Divinity. Come think of it, there's like sirens and stuff. Surely there'd be magic as well. I don't know. It's a bit second you're taking back to the Sunday masses out of your youth. And the charity always spoke in a thunderous voice like that. We have from momentous occasion, children. We need to help enlighten this confused child. Face begins to feel hot with mortification. It's already been drilled in your head. This isn't really you. This is just a you who doesn't know what the hell you're doing. There's absolutely no need to further humiliate you. Unless humiliation is meant to exercise the demon out of you. These young ones rebelled against divinity's will, therefore we only come to one conclusion. Demon runs rampant in his soul. He holds his soul with the foul claws of evil. <gasps> Fear not, children. Fear has not been consumed by evil, that the damage is irreversible. Today we'll learn to the crude extent of divinity's love. That love will exercise the demon out of him. Our children, pray for him. Pray we will tear the demon out of him. Pray that a good soul remains. People the hands of devout prayer. Almost like they're in drug induced trance. In the other situation, you know, it's beautiful. Conjuring of people peacefully band together in support of a loved one. Of course, though, you struggle to see the beauty in it. So then, why did you. I don't really get why he came here, though. It's like. I know this is in the description under now. I forget what the description said. Am I dumb? Am I just not getting the story? Do I just maybe see the beauty after the completion of the ritual? Are you depressed? Are you depressed, Clarence? Is that why you came to the here? We knew you to think that you know what's best for you, right? We want for your responsible decision. You want to be here in the first place, right? Even then, you wouldn't end up here. What kind of fantasy you decided? Where do you think you and Ash are going to be free? People finish praying and turn their burning gaze towards you. This is it. You want everything the people want out of you. You love who you meant to love. You'll be free, right? Free of all the constraints placed upon you just with something so trivial as romance. It's moment, however, you wonder if it's really your fault. The constraints placed upon you. Were they really your fault? Maybe self wasn't so tainted, you wouldn't be able to change these restrictions. Music goes dark, the body is limp. The numbness, it hurts, it's strangely enough. It's so cold that it almost burns. Wait, this isn't right. Vision slowly turns. You guys feel very numb, like something is squeezing them. Wasn't this supposed to be some kind of ritual? When did they say anything about it? Wait. His eyes are glued shut. Nothing that the surgeon do to invoke it, due to invoke a reaction. Almost to be sedated. And it hits you. That's your body. Where are you? Are you not in your body? This doesn't make any damn sense. Mother Charity also said the surgery is against divinity's will. Ooh. So the plot thickens. Ooh, this is an interesting twist. Then so what is this? We can elaborate any thoughts, something to help probes are you. What happened the fleshy mass in the head were to tampered with? What if scapels tore it apart in such a way that it didn't render your body useless? Something snapped away from him in the very moment. Something important. Something's gone in every turn. Some part of it remains. It'll never be the same. Clarence and Mother graduated in law school with flying colours. Professor's pace of focus he was. He always seemed to live life outside the classes. He was perfect in their eyes. He was about perfect in the eyes of his family. Thank divinity, they are blessed with a wonderful child. People will always say to his mother. But I'll say, goodness, a dream will work wonders on him. Clarence had any clues what they were talking about. Of course he didn't care to ask what he meant by that, but he wasn't supposed to question it. He was content with being perfect. Absolutely, positively perfect. 
Exactly as a young man like him should be, right? Obviously, Clarence had to act the war force. What kind of man would he be if he didn't? So he joined the third imperial in the Liberia City. Precinct will always look at me to tell him you are to stop there. Clarence didn't care much of detective work. He was detached enough from his surroundings to be out of the stomach the violence involved in the field. Same detachment, Zach would like Clarence didn't truly really give a shit. He was just there for a pay check. When Clarence entered the office, there was a couple of detectives all chattering each other while slipping scalding coffee. One glance at Clarence. His detective had deep brown hair, ivory skin, and emerald green eyes. Clarence found an odd sense of familiarity, even though he'd never seen this person before. Detective took a quick glance at Clarence. It seemed like that would be it. Then he looked at Clarence again, this time with a surprised look. Clarence could have sworn this young man was going to spit out his coffee with a look on his face. The young detective nearly spilled his coffee while getting up from his seat as the co-workers looked after him with the absolute bewilderment. Thankfully, he didn't make an absolute mess. Clarence, is that really you? I haven't seen this so long. I thought something happened to you, bro. <laughs> Do I know you? The stranger gulped at Clarence with confusion and disappointment. Clarence? Clarence had absolutely no clue how this man knew his name. Neither the men wore name tags. This was Clarence's first day in the office. The stranger had his head low. The child had been scolded by his parents. Clarence's eyes were caught by the contents of the stranger's desk. In front of the stranger, the strawberry blonde woman was held in a wooden frame. Peter be wedding photo. The stranger's face looked absolutely miserable in the photo. The slight brow was glued to his face. But Clarence can tell certain the rage is arranging on. It's kind of a depressing ending. Will they... Will they go on a bro... Bro marriage? <laughs> will they... <laughs> will he be divorced, sir, for him? It's only looked so to marriage and he has been forced into the marriage. For the first time Clarence had ever seen a man unsatisfied with what might be an arranged marriage. One's person kind of squared a completely different story. How could a man not be happy with a wife like that, Clarence thought. Clarence eventually found out the stranger's name Asher Cypress, who was supposedly the top detective in the precinct, having cracked the most high profile cases in Liberia City. Clarence had heard the name before in the morning paper. Expected Asher Cypress to be called Stoic Vigor. How else could one manage a goal scene on the job? Clarence Charles Hell didn't think this chatty young man was the Asher Cypress. Whenever Clarence so much as walked outside of her room, Asher would drop what he was doing and we had to track with Clarence. Asher would ask stupid things like, Did I do something, Clarence? Clarence figured that it was self explanatory as why he gave Asher the cold shoulder. Clarence had no idea what the hell was Asher's deal. Asher acted like he and the Clarence were close friends, even though they'd never seen each other. Back in Clarence's mind, he wouldn't help but feel that I should view them as something more. Much, much more than friends, let alone acquaintances. And to oneself. So that's it? Is that it? I guess that's it. So what did I think of that game? Yeah. It was... Kind of interesting, I guess. Eh, yeah. I guess it's good that, <laughs> I don't know, would you, would you do it? Would you do gay conversion therapy if you could just do surgery? I don't know. Was he happy though? Was he happy being forcibly converted? I didn't really get what was wrong with him, was it just that he just, just said he was a gay bear. <laughs> he was gay. Is that it? I said, I don't know, why would he go there then? I don't know. Yeah. How do I feel? Do I feel attacked? Because personally, I'm religious. Like, I would, you know, I'm, I'm personally against. I oh, no, I'm, I'm for gay marriage and everything. I don't think that it should be, I, I don't think it should be, like, 
churches should be forced to marry gay people, but other than that, you know, if they want to they want to be with gay people, want to be with gay people, then that's fine. I don't see why they make such a big deal out of it when they ignore pretty much a lot of the teachings anyway. <laughs> And a lot of the teachings, even of the more benign teachings, like I was saying before, like, like how it turned the other cheek when someone strikes you, and yet, no, we have an army, we have police officers and stuff. You know, society, like, doesn't function if we don't ever fight back. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I mean, why, why not with gays? I, I've heard debates with, like, Christians debating for gay marriage, and pretty much all it is, all I've heard from them is just that it's, like, just against God, and that's it. Because <laughs> God says so. That's why you don't have sex with men. It's kind of dumb. At the same time, there's plenty of Christians who don't think that way. Like, I, yeah, again, I don't think that way. I mean, plenty of, be like, yeah, I don't know. I wish the church would drop it. Like, I don't think they should change that much. Like, there's plenty of good things about Christianity and everything, like, well, definitely objective morality is good. Like, thinking that there's definite right and wrong. Like, say murder is wrong and everything. I, I don't like atheists saying that... What is it? Uh, what's it called? Like, the, the way that morality is... Is, uh... I don't know. I don't know. remember what it is. Like, morality is what you say it is, what people say it is, and what society says it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Any good teachings, but yeah, this one's stupid, dude. Hmm. So, yeah. It's, It's a bit depressing the ending which is good though because it is a horror game you expect going in to be depressed or or be scared or something and this just did a good job of it man. yeah anyway i think that's about it yeah it's, it was okay it's okay i mean bit strange <laughs> and like I said before a bit weird how there's so many gay people <laughs> I guess it'll be yeah and two percent of the population wait how do you unless I'm wrong I don't know maybe maybe in this world there's more gay people well, anyway, I'll see you guys later.